Well, guys, welcome back at Unwatch MPSUs, and here we are with another undervolting tutorial today for the RX 7900 XTX. But this video is actually going to work for every single RX. 1700 series so the xt is gonna be fine and even the gre even though it's clocked a bit lower i'm gonna tell you how you can apply this to that as well now this is gonna give you higher fps first of all depending on how you set it lower power consumption dramatically lower lower temperature lower noise even reduce your coil wine and just uh, everybody should do this okay now before we get started just one thing so my mission on this channel is to try and cover for undervolting and overclocking every single component out there. So every single CPU and GPU. So I have a few videos uh, for other components already. I have basically 90%, I think, of components out there on the channel. But if you can drop a like and a sub, if the tutorial ends up being helpful, you're gonna help me out a lot in managing to cover every single component out there. And that's what I'd like the most. Without further ado, let's get moving and let's get started with the undervolt. Now, the card we're using today is an RX 1700XTX ASRock Tai Chi White, the one you can see right there in my personal PC. And uh, I've also gonna have a review of that card soon on the channel. So let's go. Okay, so here we are in Windows with the actual Undervolt. So we're gonna use two pieces of software. One is Heaven Benchmark, the other one is MSA Afterburner. And both of them will be down below in the description. Okay, so you can just download them. First thing you wanna do is just start Heaven Benchmark right here. Then you press the Windows key and you pull up the overlay of MSI Afterburner over here. If you have multiple GPUs, like if you have an integrated graphics, you wanna click here and make sure you select one of the two, which is the appropriate one. So if, if you see, if I check here, it's the integrated graphics. If I check here, it is my RX 1700 XTX, which is what we want. So at this point, first thing you wanna do is go into settings and make sure you check the voltage control and voltage monitoring. You want these checked. Hit apply, hit OK. And here we go. Now, if your card has a BIOS switch, you want to put it on performance. This is very important. My Taichi card has it. I will show the footage on screen. Make sure your card is on performance, even though we want to lower the temperature. Now, first setting is going to be if you want to just copy it and get lower temperature, more performance, and the sweet spot in general. I'm gonna just give it to you quickly, then I will discuss more if you wanna stay. So, unlock the power limit all the way. Then, click here, bring up the curve editor. Now, this is your megahertz curve, and this is your voltage curve. So, in your voltage curve, as you can see, we are at 1150. We wanna bring it all the way down to 1100. Okay, exactly 1100. If you can't do 1100, just go, you know, one or two points higher, but you can use your keys on the keyboard to do exactly 1100 right there. Then you want to go on your clock curve and mine tops out at 2980, but yours may actually be a bit higher, especially if you have the performance bias on. This one, you want to bring it all the way down to 2900 flat right there. Okay. At this point, hit apply. And the first step is done. As you can see, our frequency just immediately jumped up. So what we are missing now is we can get some free performance by doing a slight memory overclock. Now, this is just for performance. So if you are actually just looking for temperature, noise, etc., you can leave the memory at stock. But every single car I've tested does 2700 stable. So just hit it and it's going to run perfectly fine. And if you want to just copy my settings, tutorial is already over. You can just copy this. Make sure Afterburner starts with Windows by clicking here, go into settings, make it start with Windows, start to minimize, hit OK. Save this profile on number one, click number one, click apply, and you can close the video. But remember your promise, drop a like and a sub if I helped you. But in case you want to stay, I'm going to show you more in depth how to tune this card because it is a beast of a card flagship from AMD, you can do actually a lot, a lot more. So let's go in order. Now, if your card is slightly unstable at this frequency, but you want this kind of performance, you need to go and touch the voltage. So if your card is very unlucky, the worst possible card out there in the market will be stable at 2900 with 
1120 on the voltage. So you may just drop this to 1120 if your card is crashing in games, if you're encountering blue screens. You also want to make sure it's not your VRAM. So if you're doing your testing, just check out 2500, okay, while you're testing. However, if you want to get more performance, on the contrary, um, a lot of cards can do 3000 megahertz, so 3 gigahertz on the core clock. So you want to do that, just get the curve up to 3000 flat, as you can see, hit apply, and a lot of cards that's going to work. My card that is working. However, just because you get a higher top of the line frequency doesn't mean your card is going to hit it. Okay, that's why 2900 is the sweet spot. If you want to get lower performance and you think your card is a bit luckier, okay, here's how you do it. So remember to have your core clock at 2900, especially if you care about temperatures. And now you want to go lower with your tension. So a good card is going to do 1075, okay? A, a pretty good card, not an insane card still at 2900 an insane card if you just won the silicon lottery you can do 1050 if your card does 1050 you're very lucky and it's gonna just run amazing because it's gonna run cool quiet boosting for longer because it doesn't reach power limit it's gonna be amazing so if you can do this do this memory wise if you're very lucky you're gonna be able to get 2800 i haven't really seen any card stable at more than 2800 and i mean like really stable after testing in memory intensive games so this is my maximum recommendation for you if you want to play it out a bit whereas if you wanna lose performance but get your card a lot cooler here's how you do it so you get 1050 on the tension okay and drop this one to 2400 now, if you're doing this, you're not losing too much, actually, because it's the effective boost that matters. You're not losing 500 megahertz. You're just losing like 200, which is like 10% performance, even a bit less. So you're sacrificing 10% performance, but you're getting like 30% more power efficiency, dropping 20 degrees in temperature, etc. If you're doing this, definitely keep, keep your memory at stock and hit apply. And uh, as you can see, dropped but my temperature is gonna just drop a lot, or my fan speed. But as you can see, in my card, this was not stable, because my card, for some reasons, is good at the high frequency, not so good at the low frequencies. Now, why did I show you the crash? Because I wanna show you that if the PC crashes after the undervolt, it is no big deal. Just wait, and the screen is gonna come back. If it doesn't come back, just turn off the PC, Turn it on again, and you're going to be fine. But as you can see, it came back. I'm going to just uh, cancel this, reset my thing, and I can just uh, reboot the PC. Make sure you reboot it if you have a crash, and then start tweaking again. A crash is not a problem. So for efficiency, 1050 millivolt. Again, if you're a bit unlucky, maybe 1075 millivolt, sure. Uh, and drop the core clock at 2400. Keep memory at the minimum. Still, you want to max out the power limit, and still, if your card has a BIOS switch, you want the performance BIOS. And now, the tutorial is properly finished. So again, if you have any questions, of course, I'm going to be in the comments as well. And uh, I hope the video was interesting. Let me know your results, and let me know if the video works for you. And again, drop a like and a sub for more, and also check out the channel for more undervolting content. Bye-bye.